Okay, so hey there guys. So today's video is going to be my June favorites. I cannot believe we're already in July because I'm actually filming this video a lot later than the other videos that I've been filming. I'm actually have been filming a lot this week. I know I say this every time I film, but I really don't have a million favorites this time because <coughs> I was on a no buy for like half of June and I didn't start picking up more things until like the past like couple weeks, like probably the third week of June because um, I just wanted to pick up a few primers and mascaras and concealers from the drugstore and that's basically all I got. I really haven't made any like huge makeup purchases in a while, not since the Sephora VIB and Ulta sales because I just have too much makeup and I'm just really trying to enjoy my collection the way that it is and I really don't need one more stitch of makeup for a long time um, because I'm basically running out of room to store everything so I did pick up some new things from Flower Beauty recently I'm actually wearing a few of the products today but I'm going to be hauling those next week so I'm not going to be mentioning mentioning them in my favorites video today because I'm still testing them out I just picked them up yesterday so I tested them out yesterday and I'm testing them out again today so basically everything else is going to be from that drugstore haul and then just older favorites. So that's about it. I kind of want to start with highlighters today because since we're now into summer, I just really want to talk about the glow. So we're going to start with those. Um, so I think my number one favorite highlighter this month, and I just can't get enough of this highlighter, is this, is the Physician's Formula Butter Highlighter in the shade Champagne the Mirror Miro Butter Highlighter. These are fantastic, you guys. If you guys are looking for something that's super intense and really just doesn't take much work to put on, that just looks stunning all the time, this is absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love this. I talk about it in like every single favorites video, but I feel like this is like my go-to summer highlight now. I've worn it so many times this past month. I've been reaching for it over all my other highlighters the past couple of weeks, and it's just so freaking gorgeous. It is starting to get a little bit of a scent to it, though. I don't know if it's the brush that I'm using or the setting spray or anything, but look how beautiful this is. It's just so intense, so gold. I just wore it, I think, a couple of days ago to work, and just, I'm always reminded how beautiful this is. This is like, I feel like this would look so gorgeous with just like a little bit of concealer, some of this, and like mascara, and like a gloss, and I feel like it would just look so gorgeous for the summertime. I would probably never wear it like that, but, because I always usually need to wear eyeshadow, but this is just phenomenal. It's like... So inexpensive. I mean, these aren't... Physicians Formula isn't super inexpensive, but they are cheap enough to justify the price. And I probably would pay at least $30 for this highlighter because I feel like it really is that worth it. I really have been trying to debate whether if I need to pick up another one of these. I was thinking about picking up another shade, but I just picked up another highlighting palette that I'm trying out now. From Flower, I'm wearing something else today that I'm about to talk about, but um, this is phenomenal. I love it. And speaking of the highlight I'm wearing today is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy Highlighter. I've been reaching for this a lot this month as well. Probably more than last month because I wasn't really using it as much. Because um, I really was using it a lot when I first got it, and then I didn't really use it that much in... Uh, May, but this past month in June, I was definitely reaching for it more, and I just realized how much I really, really do love this highlighter. I don't love her, but I feel like the more and more I use this, the more and more I actually love it, and as you guys can see, I, again, I'm just a sucker for gold highlighters, so that one is the Amrezy highlighter, and I'm also wearing it on my cheeks today, and it's just such a beautiful gorgeous sheen. I feel like the past few days I've been really into like more sheeny highlighters rather than like super intense ones. Especially if I'm just going to be going over my boyfriend's house or just like filming a video and then going to his house. 
um, because it's just not as crazy intense, but it still gives you that glow, but not being like too crazy. It just looks like a wet highlight for the summertime, and I'm into that. So I'm probably going to be wearing this a lot more this month as well. It's already July, and I'm already wearing it again, so it's just a gorgeous highlighter. And the next one, again, is no surprise, but I was reaching for this again a lot this month. It's the Lancome Dual Finish Highlighter Multitasking Illuminating Powder All Day Wear in the shade 05 Sparkling Peach. Like I told you guys, I feel like the Physician's Formula Highlighter is basically a dupe for this formula, and this one is twice the price. The Physician's Formula ones, I think, are like $13 or $12 or something and this is like I think about $44, $45 but again I would pay like $50 for this. It's so amazing you guys. I feel like it's so worth it. It's slightly more smooth than the um, Physicians Formula but it's just so beautiful. It's not the same shade. This one is the Sparkling Peach one. That one's the Physicians Formula. So I know I constantly compare these two, but I really did reach for these a ton this month. So I would be lying if I said I didn't reach for them. As you can see, I do use this a lot. I just love it. Like with any type of warm eye, this is like the first highlighter that I think about putting on my face. It's just so beautiful. So I, I just love it. I'm going to use it so much more this month, I feel like. So it's just gorgeous. And then the last like newish highlighter is the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in the shade Whisperer Guilt. I feel like I finally like really like this highlighter. I'm still not like over the moon about it, which is crazy to me, but I definitely did reach for it a few times this month. So this is the Whisperer of Guilt highlighter. <clears throat> And I know it has such a cult following, but again, I out of these four gold highlighters, this one is definitely my least favorite. It's just not as smooth as Old Darling is. It's a little bit lighter on my skin, and again, I felt like it was basically the same shade as the Amrezy one, but it's a little bit deeper, and when I put it on my skin, I feel like it's a little bit too dark for me, but... um. I'm still on the fence about it, but I still, I really like it just because it's such a well-known highlighter, but I feel like it's like Estee Lauder's Heat Wave, like Heat Wave has such a cult following as well. I feel like they're the two most talked about highlighters besides like maybe Becca's Champagne Pop, um, but Whisper of Guilt is definitely probably the most famous highlighter. If, I don't think there's anyone not in makeup that uh, that's in makeup that doesn't know Max Whisper of Guilt. I feel like Mac really changed the game for highlights, but I don't know. Just I I prefer the um, mineralized skin finish uh, baked highlighters from them rather than this formula. The extra dimension are good, but I still prefer those more soft and gentle. Like still my favorite highlighter from Mac. So. I'm going to use this even more this month, and I'm going to use more of my MAC highlighters this month, and I'll let you guys know. I feel like I have to do, like, a comparison or something to really, like, know how I feel about them. And then the last, oh, uh, actually, we have quite a few more highlighters to talk about, so let's just put them over here. Um, let me just talk about these ones. So I actually mixed these a couple of times this month, and I really liked the combo, so this is the Maybelline New York Master Chrome by Face Studio Metallic Highlighter in the shade Molten Rose Gold. Again, I've talked about this a bunch of times as well. As you can see, I've used it quite a bit. Um, that this is basically just as good as the... I just want to swatch all the highlighters for you. I'm probably not going to swatch that many other things in this video, but it's just so pretty. This is the Rose Gold one. <clears throat> Such a gorgeous highlight. Um... It's just as good as the um, Molten Gold, and I just wore the Molten Gold in a chit chat get ready with me. I think I posted it a few days ago, so if you want to see that applied, then you can check out that video. And then the other one is the Milani Instant Glow Powder After Glow Highlighter. I never say this name right. Uh, Strobe Light Instant Glow Glow Powder in the shade After Glow. I'm like, plow. Like, I cannot speak. And this one and this one I mixed a lot this month. I, like, wore the same combo, like, twice in a row because I thought it was so pretty together. 
Again, the Milani one doesn't really swatch like anything, but once it's on the face, it's so pretty. It's definitely much more of a softer highlight than the other ones. So this one is the Milani one up here. As you can see, it's not that glowy, but on the face, these are really pretty. These are really nice for like everyday highlighters too. It's more of that sheeny type of highlight that I've been talking about. So like the Amrezy and this one, they're kind of like, the Amrezy is a little bit more intense, but the Milani one's gorgeous. So I've been mixing these two together and I really like the combo. So these are gorgeous as well. And then the last individual highlighters, I can't really open, open them. Open. Uh, but um, I can't even speak. I'm like open, but um, this is the Jouer powder highlighter in the shade Skinny Dip. I did kind of shatter it, but I kind of found a new love to wear this again. I can't really like show it to you guys because I did drop it once, so now I just keep it in my box flat. But I just wanted to show you guys like why this is so beautiful. So it's just look how intense that is, isn't it gorgeous? And this was like my go-to highlighter last summer and I kind of rediscovered it again and I wore it this past weekend to work to work and it was just so beautiful. So I'm definitely going to wear that more in the summer again as well. And then the last um, individual highlighter is the Mary Luminizer by The Balm. I usually mix it with the Skinny Dip highlighter and it looks so pretty. Again, this one shattered. Um, I didn't even drop this. It just ended up being like shattered but this is such a gorgeous highlighter you guys because it's just so smooth and again it's like that sheen kind of highlighter and it's just a cult classic like so many people like when you talk about the bomb this is like their most famous product like everyone has this <laughs> if you know who the bomb is you have mary luminizer like it's just such a gorgeous highlight and again it's like a super buttery intense formula and every time I wear this I'm like oh my god I'm reminded on how beautiful it is so I feel like I just need to whip it out and wear it more often but I'm always like wearing my newer highlighters like the next ones I'm talking about as opposed to wearing that one and then the last one is the ColourPop Innuendo highlighting palette I do reach for this quite a bit I just feel like I'm so worn out from filming the past couple days. Like I filmed a chit chat get ready with me yesterday. I filmed uh, my products I want to use up in 2018 on Tuesday and now I'm filming my favorites today. I'm not filming anything else until next week after this because I'm actually busy the next three days. Um, so anyway, this is the ColourPop Innuendo palette and again, I mostly reach for just three out of the six highlighters in here. I should be using more of these colors but... I always mix these three together. Glad you came on the loose and morning after, but I always talk about these, so I'm just going to give them a shout out. I'm not going to swatch them because I end up talking about this palette quite a bit. So, um, but this is a great highlighting palette from ColourPop as well. ColourPop makes some great highlighters. I still love the double play one. That's like one of my favorites. It's such a gorgeous highlight. And the Here Kitty Kitty is really pretty too. Okay, so that is it for the glow. Now we're just going to move on to blushes because I only have two blushes to talk about because I haven't really picked up any new blushes. I only just picked up a new one for, from Flower Beauty. Can I speak from Flower Beauty yesterday? Um, and I just tried it out on camera, but again, I'm not going to haul it yet because I'm probably going to be placing a ColourPop order in a little while, probably next week. Um, but the only new blush that I picked up, and I actually really like it, is the Physicians Formula Butter Blush in the shade Vintage Rose. Um, I actually wore this the past couple of days twice in a row, so I would know like how I feel about it, and I think it's really pretty. I definitely preferred this shade over the Plum Rose shade. I feel like the Plum Rose shade is too... Uh, light for my skin tone. I'm not wearing it today. I'm actually wearing a NARS blush today, but um, this is really pretty. Like, smells so good. Again, smells like that coconut dream. I just love it. And this is just really smooth and buttery, and I definitely prefer this color over the Plum Rose one. It shows up really nicely on my skin. It's super soft, super buttery, melts right into your skin, blends out really nicely. So, I was really impressed with this, so I'm definitely going to be using this more, and of course I picked up another peach blush. I also was 
um, intrigued on picking up another blush from Flower Beauty, the shade Sweet Pea. But I was like, no, I kind of want to stick with the peach one um, because uh, a lot of people were talking about that one. And I also want to pick up one of the new L'Oreal blushes because a lot of people are talking about those and Catherine Lights keeps on raving about those. So I might pick those up later in the month. Um, but that's about it. But I want to do, I want to try out a couple more blushes, but this is really pretty, so definitely a fan of this one. And then I just wanted to talk about one more blush that I didn't mention last month that I'm like kicking myself that I didn't. I didn't really use it as much this past month. I used it more the month before that. And this is the It Cosmetics Ombre Radiance Brush in the shade Je ne Blush in the shade Je ne sais quoi. Um, I wasn't really into this when I first got it, and it kind of took me a long time to actually get into this blush. But once I started using it more last month, it is really pretty on the skin. Maybe I used it once last month. I don't even know, but it's just really gorgeous, and it actually has a really nice formula. So this is a really nice formula from It Cosmetics. See how it's, like, nice and subtle? But this is a, a, a really nice formula. This is the only blush that I have from It Cosmetics. I'm not really into their brand anymore because it's like, you know, I've told you guys before, like how can they be inclusive when they don't really have any shades for anybody else besides like fair skin tones. But, you know, it is what it is. But it is a really pretty pink blush. So that's it for blushes, honestly. Um, I basically have been using the same like five blushes lately. I'm not very inspired by blushes. Um, recently I did pull out my Urban Decay Afterglow blushes a few times this month. I pulled out Indecent, which I haven't used in a while, but again, I've talked about them a million times. So, we'll see if I use a blush more consistently this, this next month, but I do want to pick up a few more blush formulas, because I've never tried any blushes from L'Oreal, so I'm kind of intrigued by those. So, I'll update you guys later. So now we're just going to finish up with bronzers. For face products because I don't really have any new foundations to talk about either. I only have some primers and eyeshadows and lipsticks. So yeah. Um, so I've just been really reaching for my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer this past month because it's the summertime and this basically smells like a summer dream. So I've talked about this a million times but it really is my go-to bronzer for the summer. I've been wearing a lot lighter makeup because it's been really hot out. I'm wearing it today, and I've basically just been hanging out with my boyfriend a lot. Um, I did go out with my best friend last week because she was here for a few days, so I did see her Tuesday and Wednesday last week. But this week, I'm staying more with him and staying in more because this weekend, we are, we're actually going out with his friends for a couple of other stuff. We have Ant-Man on Saturday, and then we have a barbecue to go to on Sunday, so... And then next week, I'm not going to have a car. So I'm just telling him that I'm trying to get out as much as possible. He's, like, not that into it. But, you know, he's going to have to just go with me. So anyway, um, so I did recently hit pan on this. And I'm going to be updating you guys about it in my products I've used up in 2018 video. Halfway through the year update. So I'm really proud of myself that I did that. But just every. Every time, the thing that intrigues me to use this the most is the smell, which is crazy because I've never been like so into a product just because of the scent, but it's like I can't wait to put this on because it smells amazing. It is a great bronzer. It's just so light for the summertime and it's so pretty, but it's also just because it smells like a, a coconut island, so that's why I feel like it's a little bit more potent than the blushes, but... I just love it. And then, of course, my other go-to bronzer for the summertime is the uh, Too Faced Sweet Tea uh, Baked Luminous Glow Bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea. As you guys can see, this is getting pretty low because I absolutely love this bronzer as well in the summertime. I basically alternate between the Physician's Formula and this bronzer. I wore this yesterday, and I wore it when I tested out my Flower Beauty products for the first time. This is the bronzer I wore, so you're going to be seeing that video next week probably after I haul the products from Flower Beauty. But this is, again, just my go-to bronzer for the summertime. It's just so glowy, so beautiful. It's a great bronzer. So that is it for those. Now let's just talk about a couple of primers. Um, so the first one is probably my favorite one out of all of these. So the first one is the L'Oreal 
Magic Lumi Light Infusing Primer. I am obsessed with this. It is so smoothing on the skin, so beautiful. It blurs your skin so beautifully, and it just makes your foundation look so gorgeous when you put it on. I love this, and this is probably going to be my go-to primer for the summertime because it's super glowy. I'm probably not going to use it after, like, August, but I'm so happy I picked this up because now I'm probably going to be using it all through the summertime until, like, September. So I love this. I can't wait to use it more. But I've used it like at least five times and I love it. It's just so beautiful on the skin. I used it in my Chit Chat Get Ready With Me um, that I posted a few days ago if you want to see me apply it. But it's just so beautiful. I love that. It just makes your skin look so gorgeous. Then the next one that I'm actually wearing today is the LA Girl Pro Prep HD High Definition Smoothing Face Primer. I did pick up the Maybelline Baby Skin as well, but I think I like this one more. I feel like it makes my foundation lay a little bit smoother. It's also very smoothing on the skin. So I have been using this a bunch. It says, help smooth and fill in lines and pores, paraben and fragrance free and rich with vitamin C, vitamin E. And then it says, apply on clean or moisturized skin prior to makeup application, obviously. But it's really nice and smoothing, and I feel like it does a good job of having my foundation lay smoothly. I am, I have been testing out a new foundation yesterday, and I tested out this uh, foundation with this primer today. So I want to see how it helps the foundation. So, so far I'm more of a fan of the foundation than I am the concealer. I really did not fall in love with the concealer that I picked up recently. Like, I am so picky with concealers. I only like about five concealers in my collection right now. So, um, but yeah, this is really good. So I'm going to keep on trying that out. And then the last full-size primer is the Maybelline Master Prime by Face Studio Blur and Smooth Primer in the um, shade 100. This is actually really nice, really smoothing on the skin blurs really nicely so I've been more into this one than I was the baby skin I feel like this one makes my skin feel a little bit nicer so I've been into this one too but I have to test those out more but I just want to say that I am liking them so far um now let's jump into a couple of mascaras because I did try a few mascaras this past past month before I jump into the mascaras let me just mention this primer really quickly so we can be done with primers this is the Milani Eyeshadow Primer in Lightweight Invisible Finish. Works on all skin tones. So I did finally pick up another eyeshadow primer this month. Because I really just needed a new one. Because my Smashbox and my MAC one are both like pretty much almost done. And this one um, a lot of people recommended to me. So this is the only eyeshadow primer I've been using for, since, since I picked it up. So it's been like two weeks at least, and I actually really like it. It blurs really, really fast into the skin, and it is a bit dry, but um, I I'm think that it's a little bit dry so that the eyeshadow can stick to it a little bit better, so it's a little bit more tacky, so I do like that. So I have been enjoying this. Very smoothing, um, and it blends out really easily. Like, it doesn't take any time to smooth out. And I also noticed that this doesn't cling to, like, the inside of my eyes as much as other primers do because I have a problem with primer, like, kind of adhering to the skin that's, like, on the inner part of my lid, especially on this eye. But I find that this is not dry, like, at all. It just feels dry after you blend it in. Like, it has that tacky, dry feeling. Um... But it, it, it feels tacky enough that I feel like um, eyeshadow sticks a lot better to this. So I, I think I like this more than the Wet n Wild one. I'm not like in love with it, but it's good. I like it. Um, so now let's talk about the mascaras. The one I wanted to talk about first is the Clinique Lash Power Mascara. And this one my mom got for me. And I'm actually really, really liking this mascara now. This has become one of my go-tos for every day. It gives you a lot of really nice length to your lashes, and I, like, I'm not wearing it today. I'm actually wearing the Catrice one, but I feel like I need a little bit more mascara, um, but I'm not going to put on any more because I'm just going to his house, so I really don't feel like it, but this does give me a lot of length, and it's a really good mascara for the bottom lashes as well. It, I'm actually liking this more and more the more and more I use it. I didn't really love it when I first used it. 
but now when I've been using it more, it really separates and lengthens my lashes. So I'm actually a really big fan of this. This is a really nice mascara. And then the next one is the CoverGirl Katy Perry Katy Cat Matte Mascara. I actually really like this one. Katy Cat Eye, not Katy Cat Matte. I always think about the Katy Cat Matte lipsticks. I love that lipstick. Um, but this is the second product that I picked up from the collaborations of Katy Perry and CoverGirl. This one was actually on clearance, and I've been picking up a bunch of stuff from CoverGirl at CVS because a bunch of their stuff has been on clearance. And this one's actually really good, too. It gives me a lot of volume, and it separates, and I've been a pretty big fan of this one, too. Again, I didn't love it as soon as I tried it, but I feel like when I try a mascara more and more, I like it more. So this is actually really good, too. And then the last one is another CoverGirl mascara. This one is the CoverGirl Plumpify Blast Pro Mascara. I've only tried this one out, I think, twice. But I actually really like this one too. The only thing I don't really love about it is the ridiculously huge wand. But it does give you a really nice amount of volume as well. So these are the only two CoverGirl mascaras I've ever tried. I've never actually tried a CoverGirl mascara. I've tried Wet and, the Wet n Wild one. I've tried quite a few from L'Oreal, quite a few from Maybelline. But I've never tried any from CoverGirl. So I was like pretty intrigued to try them since they were both on clearance like this one was seven dollars and the Katy Perry one was six dollars so I'd rather get two mascaras for the price of one L'Oreal or Maybelline mascara because they're like eleven twelve dollars full price so why not pay thirteen dollars and get two mascaras you know and this is really nice too so it gives me a lot of volume too um, I just wish that the um, wand was smaller, but I'm definitely going to use those more this month and let you guys know next month which ones um, that I still really like because um, sometimes my opinion can change about mascara. Sorry, I thought something fell. Um, so now we just have... I really don't have any new eyeshadows to talk about, you guys. I just wanted to mention really quickly which eyeshadow palettes I've been using this month. Um, these are basically... these palettes have basically been my go-to's the past month. I really haven't been changing up anything recently. I've just mostly been using the same eyeshadow palettes, so I'm just going to mention these three. So the first one is one of my go-to favorite summer palettes, and this is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve, but I just love this palette, you guys. This is such an essential for summertime for me, and I just find that I reach for it constantly. Um, and it's just such a gorgeous, warm palette. If you guys already have shades like this in your collection, you don't certainly don't need this palette. But I'm just telling you guys, it is a really, really fabulous addition to your collection. If you love Urban Decay, if you love the Naked Palettes, this is definitely probably their highest quality Naked Palette they've ever released. Um, their mattes are just beautiful in this. They blend like a dream. The lid shades are also really pretty. I love um, Dirty Talk and Scorch. Those are my two favorite shades in the palette. They're just beautiful. I wouldn't say I have an absolute favorite shade in this palette, but these two are beautiful. It's just a really good, solid palette. I feel like all the colors work with each other. Like it goes from lightest to uh, good crease shades to a few really pretty uh, shimmer shades that you can pop on the lid. And then a few deeper um, colors so you can really smoke out the lower lash line or your outer corners. And it's just a really, really well thought out palette. It's so beautiful. I have a full review on this palette on my channel if you guys really want to check out an in-depth re review of it. But I would say pick this up as opposed to the Naked Heat Petite. They are doing a lot of like um, evolvements of their products, if you would say. You know, like how they have the Urban Decay Back Talk lipstick, which was so popular, and I'm going to talk about this soon. They elaborated on that, and they came out with a full Back Talk eyeshadow palette. And they also came out with... Um, a light beam eyeshadow palette. I can't remember what that is evolving off of. I think it's one of their eyeshadows. And then the other one is the Urban Decay Beached palette, which a lot of people are talking about. It looks so pretty. But again, I really don't need any eyeshadow palettes. I've been really trying to skip over eyeshadow palettes because I don't need any. I feel a little bit washed out right now because of the sun over here. Maybe I should open the blinds. 
Uh, that's all right. We can keep it closed. Anyway, um, but yeah, this is a beautiful palette. The Beach palette I've been hearing a lot of positive reviews about, but that is a, a evolvement of their Beach bronzer, which I actually never tried. I still don't have any Urban Decay bronzers in my collection. I've been wanting to try them, but just haven't brought myself to buy them. I think I might go and check out Marshalls today and see what they have there. I also want to stop by Target as well, which I might stop by Target tomorrow. So this is the next palette I wanted to talk about. This is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. These are just my two go-to favorite um, summer palettes. I did use this one quite a bit this month as well. And it's just, again, like very similar to the color scheme in the Naked Heat palette. They have these warmer tone matte eyeshadows, and then they have these really beautiful lid shades. Again, Luscious is one of my all-time favorite shadows from Too Faced. I'm actually wearing the Natural Eyes palette today. I haven't worn it in a while. Again, I'm not the hugest fan of Too Faced anymore, but this palette is really pretty. I don't think it's as good as everybody hyped it up to be, but that shade Luscious makes the whole palette work for me. I would just buy that in a single because it's just so freaking gorgeous. And I'm going to continue to use this palette and try and pan some shades. Um, I'm hoping to pan Luscious at some point. I really am trying to work on panning eyeshadows more, but it's just so difficult for me. But this is, again, a really beautiful summer palette. It's just, you know, the peachiness reminds you of summertime. So that one is the peach palette. And then the last palette that I really have been using a lot which I pretty much mention every single month, but I do just reach for this a ton, is the ColourPop Dream Street palette. I know that you guys are probably really sick of me talking about this palette, so I'm just going to run through it super, super quickly. It's just such a solid palette. It makes me want to try more ColourPop palettes like this, which I really shouldn't because, again, I don't need any more eyeshadows, but look how much I've used this palette. Like, I use it a ton. Like, I have used every shade in this palette, I've used every shade in the Too Faced and every shade in the Naked Heat. So you can, sometimes there are palettes in my collection that I have not used every single shade in them. I try to use as many as I can, but sometimes I don't use like two or three shadows in the palette. But this is just like you can create a ton of looks out of it. What I've been doing this month when I wear like a um, blue shirt to Lucky, like my, uh, I have like two that are like blue striped. Um, they're blue with white stripes. I wear, um, a few of these shades in the crease, and then I take this blue shade called, uh, Water Bearer, and I smudge that on the lower lash line, and that's basically the only look that I've been doing. If I want to just create a little bit of interest on my eyes, I'll take this and smudge it on my lower lash line, but I also kind of got inspired by the Fancy Face to start, uh, doing a colorful lash line with a neutral look. And it really makes the um, look pop even more. So I've been kind of getting into that more too. But I usually only do it with blue. Um, just because I feel like this shade is still um, dark enough that it you can kind of get away with it. Like when I wear it to work. Because I don't want to wear anything like too insane to work. Like I'll wear like colors on the lid and stuff. Like it's not like I have to be that conservative. But um, if I want to, like, make it a little bit more interesting, I'll pop that on the lower lash line. And I've been getting compliments on it, so I guess I'm doing something right. And then just a super quick shout-out to my ColourPop shadows because I've been using these a ton this month. I've just been using all of these matte shades in the first row a ton, and then I've just been popping on some of these shades on the lid. Again, let me explain. It's just such a gorgeous inner corner shade. And then I've just been using Wake Up Call and Note to Self in my crease like basically two times a week. And because I was trying to use these a lot more this month so I could try and hit pan on them, I feel like I am very close to hitting pan on Wake Up Call and Note to Self. So if I just keep on working on those, I feel like I will hit pan on them by the end of the year. But I've had these eyeshadows for almost a year and a half. And the only eyeshadow I've ever hit pan on is Firefly. So I'm going to continue to work on them. Again, I'm going to update you guys about these in my updates video. I did wear High Strung a couple days ago on my lid. And then a couple days after that, I wore um, this shade right here. I think that's called Save It For Later. This gold shade. So I've been using these more on my lid as well. 
because I don't use the shimmery shades as much as I should, and they're just so beautiful. Again, such beautiful quality. And then the last palette I just wanted to give a quick shout out to is the Lime Crime Venus palette. I did wear this um, last week out with my best friend, and it's just such an amazing quality palette. I still find that Lime Crime shadows are the best quality that I've ever tried. They're just phenom. They're so pigmented. Like, I took this shade Rebirth all in my crease, and it was so gorgeous. Like, like, look at that. The pigmentation is just insane. It's just so beautiful. It's it's not even doing it justice when I swatch it because it's so much more orange in person, but it's such a beautiful shade. So I used, like... This shade in the crease, and I darkened it up more with Creation. Then I put Muse and Icon on the outer corners, and then I put Shell on the lid. And then I put, I think, a tiny bit of Venus. I put a little bit of this shade underneath the lower lash line, and I think a little bit of Creation. And then I put Aura on the inner corners. So you feel like you wouldn't like be able to get a full look out of this palette, but I used seven shades out of eight. I really don't use this shade that much because I feel like this is the only shade I feel like I could do without in this palette. I feel like they should have put like another warm shade in there because this one I feel like it's too cool toned. I feel like if they put like another like like a bright orange it would have been like so beautiful but this palette is bomb. I'm skipping over the third palette because since I bought the Venus XL palette I don't need the third Venus palette. I know it's a really beautiful purple palette but I actually haven't watched any reviews about it. Um, even though people are saying that yellow is going to be the new trend for eyeshadow, um, purple's making a huge comeback again because Lime Crime did a purple palette because Nasha Denona, Natasha Denona did the, which I'm not mentioning her eyeshadow palette again because um, I really didn't use it that much this month. I used it maybe once or twice. So I have to use it again more. I really haven't been reaching for my newer palettes that I got. The Smashbox one, the Natasha Denona one, and the Wet n Wild and the Burberry. I just really didn't reach for them that much at all this month. So I'm going to use them more this month, um, hopefully. But I really don't wear some of those eyeshadows, like, on a daily basis. Like, I know the palettes that I use, like, on a daily basis. But, yeah. I'm going to skip over the third one because I really don't need it, but that's an all-purple palette too. So, okay, now let's just jump into lip products. I wanted to talk about a couple of lip liners first. So I wanted to mention these two by Essence. These are the Essence Soft Contouring Lip Liners. I've been living in this shade. This one's in the shade Lost in Love, and I'm actually wearing this today with the lipstick that I'm wearing. And it's just a really pretty, like, everyday pinky nude shade so I've been using that a lot with a lot of my lipsticks and then the other one is the soft contouring lip liner in the shade sucker for gray it's a really pretty like purple shade and I've been using that one I used this one last week for um utopia for lime crimes utopia because I needed to get a new purple lip liner since I got rid of Lumiere because that one was just getting like old and I don't know why I got rid of it though because it's one of Kathleen Light's lip liners and I probably just need to purchase more lip liners um, but I've been trying to pick up more from the drugstore because the ColourPop ones just don't hold up. They like start falling out of the pencil when you sharpen them and they also get really really dirty is what I've noticed because they're white and I feel like they just got so dirty when I was the server because I would keep them like in my apron. So yeah but again these are bomb. And the last one is the CoverGirl Lip Perfection Lip Liner in the shade Seduction. This is the nude liner. And I think I'm going to run errands tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to stop by anywhere today. I just want to go straight to his house. Um, so this one is in the shade Seduction. So this is a really pretty nude liner as well. It's not as pigmented as the Essence one. It's actually very light, but I do like it for like lighter makeup days. And speaking of this lip liner, I wore it with this lipstick. We're just going to jump right into lipstick. Um, but also, I got this when it was on sale because these retail for like $8.99. But again, CVS is putting these on clearance for like $4.75 or something or like $4.50. So I picked up two shades. Maybe I shouldn't have because that's kind of expensive still for um, drugstore lip liners. Because these ones were, I believe... 
two or one ninety nine. So these were like two for like five or six dollars, and these were two for eight dollars. I mean, there's only a difference of a of like two dollars, but I wanted to pick them up because I'm not going to get them for that price again, and I felt like I wanted to try them out. So, so speaking of CoverGirl and lipsticks, I wanted to talk about the CoverGirl lipstick in the shade 235 Champagne. I did wear this um, a couple of days ago, and I did say I picked this up in my haul a couple of days ago, and this is really nice. Um, since I like the Katie Cat Matte, color in the shade Sphinx so much. I picked up a nude shade as well and these were also on clearance for about $4.50. So I figured to pick them up because again some of these lipsticks are like $9 regular price. I'm like why are they so expensive? Like I should I feel like the drugstore shouldn't be charging more than like $7 for lipstick. So this one is the nude shade and this was actually really pretty on my lips too. Was I wearing this in a video? I don't know. Did I did I wear this in a video? I feel like I did. I want to just make sure because then um I want to tell you guys to check it out. Did I put it on in this video? No, that was sugar cane. I might have I might have worn this in the other chit chat get ready with me that I'm gonna post in a little bit. Um like right after this video, I'm gonna post that video. So um I'm not sure if I did use it in that one. But um, if I did, go check it out. If not, then uh, I'll probably wear it in a different video. But this is really pretty on the lips. It's a little bit less matte than the Kitty Cat matte one. I think this is just their regular formula, like a cream formula. But it was really pretty on the lips. So I love the scent of these lipsticks too. These are like my favorite scented lipsticks from the drugstore. So I actually haven't tried like any regular lipsticks from L'Oreal, which is probably the last like lipstick brand that I'll ever, lipstick formula that I'll pick up from the drugstore since I just got this one and I also am wearing a new lipstick today from Flower Beauty for the first time that those are the only two new lipsticks I picked up and I'm like I don't need any more. Speaking of newer lipsticks, the only other new lipstick that I tried this month is the Clinique um, Chubby Stick Moisturizing Lip Color Balm in the shade Mega Melon. I got this in a sample um, pack and this is actually really really nice. It's super balmy on the lips and super sheer but it has a really pretty like peachy formula and I wore this a couple of days ago like just to my boyfriend's house to wear like a super light lipstick and it was so pretty on my lips. Um, so this is really nice as well. I I'm such a sucker for like peachy lip colors. Like I love peach everything like especially in the summertime and Actually, the other lipstick that I was wearing a lot this month is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Matte Peachy Matte Lipstick. I actually wore this a lot this past month, at least like three times to work. This was kind of like my go-to lipstick this past month. Um, just because I felt like I really didn't have any other peachy colors in my collection, which is crazy because it's like I'm sure I have a million, which I'm about to talk about another peachy one. But this one I definitely did reach for over my other ones. They're just so pigmented. They're not like the most comfortable on the lips and I don't like, it's not like my absolute favorite formula but it's just a really pretty lipstick on the lips. So I, I like these. Um, it's Anastasia so I do love her. And then the other peach lipstick of course is the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna Mademoiselle lipstick. I did tell you guys this is basically my favorite formula that I've tried this past year. It's a phenomenal formula. And again, it's very similar to the Peachy Lipstick by Anastasia. It's a little bit warmer though, but it just glides on the lips and it's so gorgeous. I love this lipstick. Um, I, I'm again like super intrigued to try out some of her newer products, but I don't have enough money yet. Um, and then of course my other go-to nude, I, I mention this all the time, but I just freaking love this lipstick, is the ColourPop Luxe lipstick in the shade layover. I think I used this in my chit chat get ready with me video that I posted like a little while back I think like a few weeks ago It's just such a gorgeous lipstick you guys that was an older chit chat get ready with me But this one is the nude shade that I own and it's just so beautiful. I love it so much I don't know why I'm swatching every single lipstick, but that one is just like my go-to favorite nude. I love it so much, you guys. I actually haven't worn it in a little while, and I'm kind of missing it because I love it so much. Um, 
And then the two like pinkier tone lipsticks that I was like obsessed with this past month, um, I mean, I only wore them both once, but I just like realized how much I love this color on my lips. They're kind of like a very similar color. So like I mentioned before is the Urban Decay Back Talk Comfort Matte Lipstick. If you don't own this lipstick, please go and try it because this lipstick is so pretty. I don't know why there's like kind of like, I don't know what's on the top of it. I don't know if it's like fuzz or something, but this is such a gorgeous color, you guys. And I love this shade. Of course, like, it's such a popular shade now, but it's popular for a reason because it's such a gorgeous shade. Like, look how beautiful that is. It's just such a unique, like, mauve tone shade. And this shade was just, like, so popular, but it's just so beautiful. I love this shade. So, I wore it, like, a week or so ago to class, and I was like, now I remember why I loved this shade. And I did try and wear more of my Urban Decay Vice lipsticks this month. And I just fell back in love with them again. They are so good. I'm just seeing if my boyfriend's going to text me. Because I'm going to try and leave soon. Because I would like to go to his house soon. And then the other pink lipstick is the Kat Von D Studded Kiss Lipstick in the shade Lovecraft. Um, this one is also really beautiful as well. I feel like I have to pee. So that's why I keep on like delaying what I'm saying. Which I really shouldn't. Um, the Kat Von D ones, they have a really nice, like, subtle vanilla scent to them, and I've always loved her matte formula. They're, this one is a little bit more matte than the Back Talk one, and it's a little bit more pink, as you can see. Um, the, back, the Comfort Mattes by Urban Decay obviously are a little bit more sheeny since they are a Comfort Matte. I feel like this Flower Beauty one is a very similar formula to the Comfort Mattes, like, it I kind of feel like that's how this feels on my lips. This it, I'm just going to mention it really quickly. Um, I'm wearing the Flower Beauty um, Naked Blush Matte Lipstick by Drew Barrymore. And I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm wearing it. And I just, I, I really like the formula so far. But I will be hauling this soon. I did pick up a few of her products and I've been trying them out. So I was just super intrigued to try out her products. And... The last regular lipstick, of course, is the MAC Patrick Star lipstick. I think I wore this quite a bit this month in the shade She Better Work. Again, it's such a gorgeous pink. I love this shade so much. I love wearing this lipstick. It's just so pretty. And that one is that shade right there. I know there's a lot of controversy with Kat Von D and also with Patrick Star lately because of the whole thing with the vaccines and everything that she's not going to vaccinate her kid. I'm still going to use her products because I'm not just going to throw out everything because that's such a waste of money to me. Like, when the whole thing with Lime Crime happened, I didn't throw out any of my products because I loved all of them still. So I wasn't going to throw them out. And again, Lime Crime and Kat Von D didn't personally offend or do anything to me. I think it's stupid what Kat Von D is doing, but I'm not going to get into it. I'm still going to use the products that I have. It's not like I really use her products on a daily basis anyway. Um, the only one that I really use, like, very consistently is the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette, but I actually haven't even used that in a little while, so, but yeah, I really like this lipstick, so I'm going to keep on using it. I might even declutter some of her liquid lipsticks because they're kind of getting a little bit old, but I'm still using her lip liners, and I really like those too. Those are, like, the last products that I actually picked up from her, and those were, that was, like, back in like February or March so I'm really not gonna be trying anything else from her I wanted to try out like the gold highlighter that she came out with for the anniversary collection but again I have enough highlighters and I have the Metal Crush highlighting palette and I heard that it's a very similar formula to that and I'm not like in love with that formula so and also with Patrick Starr a lot of people are complaining that a lot of his um actually this color is very similar to what I'm wearing I just realized that. Where did I swatch that? I'm going to swatch these later and see if they're like the same. But um, a lot of people are saying that they're kind of getting bored with his collaborations with MAC. So I was only interested in picking up this lipstick and maybe the powder. But I'm not really interested in anything else he's coming out with because nothing is new. It's just all repackaged stuff. The only like new things that he was coming out with was like one or two eyeshadows and the actual quads and like to the lipsticks were new but the blushes are all repackaged like duos that MAC already has it's like what do I need that for if I can just go and get the blushes myself 
And then the last lipstick is the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in the shade Dreamy. I actually did wear this a couple of times this month. Again, this is by Kathleen Lights. It's such a gorgeous color, you guys. I absolutely love this shade. Again, it's a peachy tone lipstick for the summertime. I just wore this a couple of days ago, and it's just so beautiful on the lips. I love it so much. And of course, I love Moonchild as well, but I didn't really want to mention glosses again. I mean, I was using glosses quite a bit this month, but... I already mentioned the glosses that I used a lot last month, and I didn't pick up any new glosses to show you guys. I still can't find my L'Oreal one. I have no idea where it is. The L'Oreal Infallible one, I have no idea where it is. It's probably in my backpack or in another purse somewhere. I found it once, like, a couple weeks back, and now I haven't been able to find it again. And then just these two. I wore this one out to dinner with my boyfriend's family, um, like... A week or so ago and it was just so gorgeous on the lips that I just wanted to give it a quick shout out this is the NARS power matte lip pigment in the shade American woman It's just such an amazing formula they're just so smooth so pigmented and they just feel amazing on the lips so I just love this lipstick and then the YSL uh, Rouge Couture matte lip stain in the shade number seven I wore this to the city a couple weeks ago when we went to the Four Seasons with my sister and my mom. And this was just so gorgeous on the lips. It lasted all day and it was just so comfortable and the scent is to freaking die for. I absolutely love the scent of YSL lip products and it's just such a beautiful lipstick. It's this one right here. Look how gorgeous that is. It's just such a gorgeous lipstick and I just wanted something super comfortable, not something too pigmented to wear all day in the city and it did not let me down. So that's it you guys. That is all my favorite. Oh, one skincare favorite is the Soap and Glory Smoothie Star Moisture Hydra Plus Body Milk moisturizer. I've actually been using this quite a bit this month and it's so nice on the skin. It smells so good. It smells like almonds and it smells just like the um oh that smells so good. I didn't think I was going to be such a huge fan of this when I first got this and the body wash but I actually like this more than the body wash. I feel like the body wash scent kind of wears off a little bit faster. I feel like when I put this on the scent like lasts like a day at least. Um and this is really nice and smooth on the skin since it's like more of a milk. It has more of like a, um, not as like that creamy, con it has a very creamy consistency, but it, it's more like a milk type, watery, oily kind of feeling and it feels so good. So I really like this. So yeah, that's it you guys. That's all my favorites for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media. Please let me know what your favorites were this past month and let me know if you guys have tried any of these products. And if you like any of these, please let me know. And yeah, that's it, you guys. Bye. And I hope everyone has a great summer. Um, and I'm going to be posting a lot more videos after this favorites video. I was posting a couple of videos last week. Some of them were older videos because, like, I wasn't really that inspired um, by filming new videos. But now I feel like I have a few videos to post this week and next week. But after that, I'm not sure what I'm going to be posting. But I'm trying to post as much this month because I'm not going to be able to post as much once I go back to school. And I said, Did I say as much? As much. And I'm actually going to Massachusetts in two weeks. Oh, my God. My neck is killing me um, to see my sister's show. But I probably will do one more to check it ready with me before I go away. So I'll probably film one next week because I'm getting my car fixed next week. But this is the last... Um, video that I'm going to be filming this week. It's so funny because I filmed my vi favorites video last, but I filmed my halfway through the year update two days ago, and I filmed another to check it ready with me yesterday, and both of those videos are going up next week, and I decided to film my favorites video today, and it's going up on the same day that I'm filming it because I want to get up my favorites video, obviously, but yeah, that's about it. Bye, guys. Oh, it's for my sister's show. Um, to go to Massachusetts. I need to stop talking, um, but that's on Friday and Saturday the 20th and 21st. So next week, since I'm getting my car fixed, my boyfriend's going to have to pick me up more, but thank God he's finally getting paid. So I don't really have to pay anymore. And he's going to be picking me up a couple of times because I told him I'm not going to have a car. And then next month I get my new car. So yeah, that's it. Bye.